Alright my pals, what's happening? How'd your Easter go? <laughs> yeah, I've just had a fucking... I don't really <clears throat> don't really celebrate Easter too much more for the kids and that, innit? Chocolate eggs and all that shit. Um, my wee boy doesn't really bother with it either, but <clears throat> it's just an excuse for them to eat chocolate and that, innit? Um, what was I got to say? Um, uh, so I, this video I wanted to do on a pretty serious case, but before I get into that, um, I was at the the five O in the Jasper boxing fight last night with my son, um, and it's pure mad to see the build up to it. Like I was like, oh no, man, in a hotel, no that I can't be fucked with. And here I bet you it's just pure. Cause it's all out in half an hour, so I was like, "Fuck sake, man!" I didn't know. I'd never seen this hotel before. I didn't know how big it was, and I just thought, "This is gonna be a pure riot." But anyway, end up getting a few beers before I went, and uh, my pal dropped me off. I mean, she's pulling the uh, the front <clears> of <throat> the hotel. There was just hundreds of people all just standing there. Like you could tell they were all getting mad with it right out there, not right, and. Uh, like no no being like like pure rowdy or not, but you just you just know, don't you? If you if you've been there yourself. And um walks in the foyer. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to see police all stone in there. And I was like, oh for fuck's sake, man. <laughs> wasn't it to me it wasn't a good sign, but I suppose with a big event like that like what what made me wonder was why was there cops there on top of security? Because there was security there, you know what I mean? But um, I it was it was it was a good night. My my fears were unfounded, <laughs> um, but I I enjoyed myself and 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 I was glad that I went. Um, and and I wasn't really bothered by any of the other fights. I was just wanting to go and see that one fight. Um, any is it didn't see it. Um, five o one by knockout. I think. Um. In respect to it's what somebody commented the day. Um, respect to anybody that can, that can, train for something like that and then, go and fight in a ring in front of all these people fucking all boozing and all that. Know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but, <clears throat> uh, it reminded it kind of no no that made me think it. Right? I remember ages ago in shorts the old shorts right. There was a screw who was an ex boxer, right? It's for Falk up way, I think. And I knew him for actually knew him for Pullman, big big guy, right? He was in about the boxing that and he, he and when I <clears throat> when he moved on to shorts, he used to have like a a, a, a kinda of annual boxing event. They'd put a big boxing gym in the ring and they'd get fighters in to fight in it and all that and it was actually alright, went to it a few times, not mean it just made me kinda of think of it. But obviously this was just a better this was just a better uh, night because obviously I'm not in the jail with fucking years to go and <laughs> there's no bar, there's no birds, there's no nothing, do you know what I mean? It's just you sitting with fucking bunch of rowdy individuals like something that a fucking Johnny Cash and San Quentin or something in it. It's fucking nuts. But um I really enjoyed myself. Obviously, I get pissed, not I mean, <laughs> goes without saying. Yeah, so, um, I had my jiu jitsu class at 12 o'clock. I didn't even wake up till about fucking that time. <laughs> um, no intentional, but go to live your life, ain't you? And shit happens, not so. Uh, that's that. But I um shout out to Five O and Jasper man, fucking everybody that took part. It was it was a good night and <clears throat> he put on a good show, you know what I mean? So brilliant. Um so moving on. Um I've been meaning to do this video for a couple of weeks now, right? And it's actually pretty harrowing. <laughs> like most of these cases are but when it involves a child, something just hits you. In the case that I'm talking about, um, if any might remember this, was this poor wee eight-year-old boy, right? His name was Mark Cummins. 
um, and he was abducted and uh, assault, assaulted in another way other than physically, um, and he was he was killed by a predatory serial paedophile. Um, and what was very unusual about this case was how this predator, scumbag, piece of shit, his name is Stuart Leggett, right? How he disposed of this poor wee boy's body by wrapping them in bags and putting them down a bin chute in a block of flats in Royston, right? No. I can actually remember exactly where I was when I heard about this. This happened in June 2004. And I was just waiting to go to shots from Bologna, right? And obviously, Bologna's no far away from Royston. Um, I remember being in the education department in Bologna with this modern studies teacher who, funnily enough, and that I knew for Pullman and it was all the news and this poor wee boy he'd went missing and first obviously it, like he hadn't returned to him for his dinner which was for what I understand for the very little that I did know about this case was that was a character for the wee boy. Like he was just a normal wee boy, he just stood playing football with his pals. He was he would he would he would never be late home for dinner. Mondal was keeping tabs on him. Not him. Um, um uh, when he's no went missing obviously like, I think it what's happened is they went out to look for him and all that. And Questioned the like I've maybe seen his pals, have you seen we Mark, whatever? Um I think then they've kinda of had to obviously notify the police because obviously the, I think as a parent, you know your kid better than MD, you know your kids' habits. And if there's something that's sort of character, as a parent, it would say half alarm bells, wouldn't it? Like I know my kid better than MD. And my kid would never, like, like disobey me. He would nah just go and like, fuck off, like, two schemes out. Like, my wife wouldn't even walk out of the, the scheme, the next scheme out without asking me, could they go? That's how well behaved he is because he respects adults as well. So what I'm trying to say is, like, if there was a certain thing he done that would kind of break that pattern and obviously that would be questioning that, you know what I mean, so um, obviously these places where this poor wee boy went missing um, this block of flats, I don't even know if they're still there now I think they are, but don't quote me on it so I'm not too familiar with that with, with up there or that bit of the city, but um. The wee boys obviously been they're always the CCTV can up uh with a a company accompanying this guy and he's knocking back out the house and then this scumbag Stuart Leggett has ov has went missing. So right away, if you're a copper this wee boy's went missing. He's been found in the bin. Like, so, for those of you who don't know, in a block of flats, if there's a communal bin shoot, you put your rubbish in it and it just goes right down into, like, the bottom of the building, into a big, massive, kind of, cart, kind of metal container bin thing with wheels on it and that, so they can empty it. So this is where this poor wee boy's been found by one of the concierge, the guys who, like, like the caretakers manage the building, clean it, all that shit, man the CCTV, all that. So that's when they've launched the murder investigation because this concierge slash caretaker guy has been <coughs> emptying the bins and obviously one of the bags is a bit 
heavier than your normal bin. You know what I mean? Your normal fucking bin bag, you know what I mean? And he's opened it and this poor wee boy's naked, battered body was inside, man. I can't imagine what it must have been like to find something like that, man. It's just... It's just off nightmares are made there, innit? Because, um, obviously, finding something like that, you're not a witness. You're, you're probably the first witness at court now. You found that body. Unless you were the killer, you're the first witness in that fucking list of witnesses now when that goes to trial, man. And then, obviously, all the other stuff, it must be coming out and you must just be sitting and thinking, like, what the fuck, man? Like, pure nightmare, know what I mean, scenario. So, obviously, when something like that's found in the bin shoot, that whole building becomes a crime scene and everybody in that building becomes a suspect. Because somebody in that building has put that poor wee boy's body in there. So, it's logical, in it? that they think everybody, you need to rule out every single person who lives in that building and you would also have to painstakingly and meticulously comb through their history and obviously when this wee boy it's turned out was was um, assaulted in a manner other than physical assault. He was physically assaulted as well, but to subdue him. Um, obviously, when the post-mortem's coming back and you're finding out these details, then what you have is somebody in that building is a predator. And it's not a woman because... When the fuck do you ever hear a woman beast doing? You 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 obviously hear about it, but I don't think it's looked at the same way. Like say, like a teacher goes with a, a female teacher was caught going out with a fifteen year old boy. I don't think it. I don't know. I I think it's all the same, right? But some people are different. Um, but they say ninety nine point. 9% of pedos are male, so you're not looking for a woman in that building, you're looking for a guy. Um, so then you what you have to look at is, is there any convicted beast living in the building? Well, turns out this fucking cockroach was, aye, and he had a list of fucking convictions. I think he was 28 when he committed this offence, right? But I think his first conviction for was was um for what flashing or something. A beastie charge anyway. When he was sixteen and he had served two long term sentences for uh the sim a similar offence to this one, but there was no murders, uh, four years, and I can't remember what the other sentence was. So, what you can see for this guy's uh, past is that he clearly has a predilection for children, do you know what I mean? And his crimes have evolved from the straight out so it's went from maybe flashing to maybe touching to then the full scale assaulting and then it's just blown up to killing and disposing of a victim and what what's weird about this is the the police had went to his door and he had to get the book this this fucking rat bag's dad was living in the house at the time 
I think he'd just came back for his work and noticed there was polis all over the place, right? But he never thought nothing of it. Until he got in the house and what's up, polis have chapped the door, asking where his son was. And I believe at that point, while they were questioning him, it's came out of the radio, the fun, a child's body in the building. And his son's nowhere to be seen. I think the guy was physically sick, man, as you fucking would be, you know what I mean? Um, and I do believe the guy assisted with helping the cops um, with their investigation, and quite rightly so, because this, this is the worst form of human. I wouldn't even classify him as a human. He's subhuman to me. Um, the kind of person that you would just anything bad to happen to him would just be I wouldn't even say karma, I would just say it's righteousness, righteous violence, righteous in it. Because somebody who could go for go for well he was to where he got to so like the evolution of his offending and i know that you see with a lot of criminals like the offending gets worse as they get older and then with some it drops off and some they just keep going or they stay constant but i don't class this person as a an a criminal in the sense that you just do it, fucking stealing motors, taking drugs, getting mad with fucking boxing here and there, whatever. Stealing, that's no... Th these people are in a category all by themselves, in my view. Um, MD that... MD that um, could hurt a child, especially in this way. Um, they're just... Crock bait to me. Um, and I mean that they're just crock bait what, somebody you just take fishing <laughs> you know what I mean except he's the bait you know the way it is not I mean? but obviously legally we are prevented from doing that do you know what I mean but um, I believe that he pled guilty at uh, court, Glasgow High Court, and received 20 years. Now, I think that's quite... It's 20 years isn't he lenient, right? But for what he done, I think it should have been fucking... I know they don't like to give it 30 years in Scotland, but he's got 30 years written over him, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> But he must have put that fucking poor boy through. Um, I believe it came out in court that he was out fixing his motor and he'd seen this wee boy, right? And I don't know if it was the first time he seen him, he invited him up to his house to see computer games or something and then dragged him around, battled him and everything else. Or... The wee boy had caught his eye, and it's but it's triggered his fan fantasy life, and he's maybe just been like lying in the house at night, like fucking, not what I mean, just oh Jesus man, and then he saw the opportunity and took it. I don't know, um, but it was just a fucking just a horrendous case and then it just dumped that poor wee boy doing a bin shit. You know what I mean? Um it's fucking horrible. But um this scumbag's actually up for pro this year. His twenty years is up, so he should be coming up for pro in about June, July, I think. Um and the the guy saying da is coming out and saying don't if the if if he goes for pro I'm contacting the pro board and saying, my son is still a danger to kids. He always will be, and he should never be let out. And I totally applaud that guy for coming out and saying that. Because the guy, the, I think he's even changed his name. He distanced himself from his son, do you know what I mean? Um, 
and they wonder because who would who would even want to be associated with anybody who is who has a thing about children um no me at all and i would like to think nobody watching this does do you know what i mean but he's up for parole regardless because your system's a fucking joke in it a lot of ways it's a pure joke people like him william beggs fucking tobin's all these people parole shouldn't he even <laughs> Pearl's a fantasy, man. Like, it should be. Like, just, no. You're not getting out, mate. You are a fucking absolute monster of an individual. <laughs> like, that's what really bugs me. I do think there's, like, it's good how you can try and get back out. No, but see the fucked up thing is, right, for them that's been in the Scottish system knows you don't just get out unless you're doing a fixed sentence, right? You don't just get out because there's all these fucking hoops you need to jump through and it just it just doesn't work like that. But what really pisses me off is see these fucking rats, people like him, they end up with more rights than the victims' families and all that. That's what really gets to me, man. Um he shouldn't have any rights at all as far as I'm concerned, but, um, and, I believe that there was a, there was a, there was a law brought out, I think it was called Mark's Law, where parents had the right to find out if a predator lived close to them, and what I found out was, there was a certain amount of applications made in one year and all of them were unanswered. Say it was like 55. Say it was 55 last year. Ah, uh, none of them have been answered. They've not been responded to. No, I mean, <laughs> what does that tell you? It's like, see, it comes across as like, no, what? We'll, we'll, give the, we'll give the family this piecemeal token gesture, but you know what we'll do? We'll just not answer any of the fucking, the, the, the inquiries. To find out if there's a beast living in your street, in your building, whatever. I don't think maybe giving you the guy's fucking photo and address and all that shit's maybe a good idea. Maybe no, I don't know, because let's be honest, man, they're just putting the thought in your head, innit? Um, but maybe telling you so that you can maybe keep a fucking close eye on your, your kids, know what I mean? But that's what I'm saying about the system being fucked up, know what I mean? Um, and I think that probably boys more does a lot of campaigning and all against uh, these types of offenders and... Um, God bless her, know what I mean? But I don't see how you could ever... That that would just that's a pain that would never go away. I think lost well, that kid in anyway. Never mind that way. But I wanted to say, um, I went on change dot org right, and made a petition about basically this scumbag gone for parole right. So basically, what I done was um, uh, made the petition and I'm going to put it in the on my page so that if any could sign it that would be good but um <clears throat> before i go i wanted to read to you some of the things that i found online about this fucking cretin um and what i found was interesting because it was a an article uh that the dad gave an interview to the Daily Record, I believe, and there was a couple of wee interesting parts in it that I wanted to read, right? Um, blah, blah, wait a minute. So basically, um, 
this is the dad basically getting uh interview on the 26th of March this year. And it says, The dad of child killer Stuart Leggett is calling on prison bosses to keep his son locked up. Leggett murdered eight-year-old Mark Cummings after abducting him from the block of flats in the Royston area of Glasgow where they lived and stuffed his body in a bin shoot. The vile killer becomes eligible for parole in June after serving 20 years of his life sentence. However, Leggett's own father plans to contact justice bosses, begging them to keep his son behind bars. The dad, who, also, who was also called Stuart Leggett until he changed his name to distance himself from his son, said, I will object to him being given parole at any stage because, in my opinion, he's still a danger to children. Mark Cummins would have been 28 years old this year, but he never got a chance to see life. My ex-son should never be released. He was born in 1975, so he's almost 49 and has still a few years in front of him. My ex-son, know what I mean? <laughs> so it says, um, Leggett sexually assaulted and strangled Mark, who had been report miss reported missing after going out to play football with his pals. Leggett had been housed in the same high-rise building as Mark. Um, the beast, so it's saying, hold on. Judge Lord Dawson told the High Court in Glasgow that Leggett was highly dangerous when caging him in October 2004, but took account of his guilty plea by recommending he serve a minimum of 20 years of his life sentence behind bars. See, that's a lot of shit. I get it why it's like, oh, you're, I, I do get why... Sometimes that's a thing, it's because like you're no you're no like putting the family through mere grief try to testify in court, hearing all the gory details and all that, I get that, but fucking scumbags like that should never be getting any concessions at all. Just but that's a fucked up thing about the law, innit? It's about all you're getting, yeah fucking what so the beast had previously been released in September 1999 after serving a sentence for assaulting boys aged 3 to 10. Know what I mean? Um, last night, Dad Stewart, who has asked us not to reveal his new identity, told how he plans to write to the pro board to ask them to keep him in prison. Stewart said, I would hope he would serve much longer than 20 years. And to be honest with you, I think he will. But... If he's eligible for parole, he can move on to the open prison, Castle Huntley, where he can get released, like, I don't see where he'd be going for a home leave, because who the fuck's going to put him up the fucking grease ball, but, um, I don't know about hostels, but he could have day releases and all that, so he'll be walking about the community, you know what I mean? Um, at the time of the murder, Stuart Senior was staying with Leggett, sleeping on his couch. So he's obviously been in the house when, um, when, when all this is no, no in the house when the wee boy was, was killed. But he had returned. He was living in the house at the time. So. Um. He said. I assisted police in arresting my son. That's not right in anyone's life. Stuart told how his son had a long-standing sexual interest in children. He said that 13 or 14, he started touching children up, lewd and lib libidinous practices, gross indecency. The partner of behaviour continued and he served short stretches before his four-year stretch. Stuart said, I am a retired overhead linesman on the railway. I spent a lot of time at work and half the time I didn't know what was going on at home. He added, since he was jailed, I have had a full change of identity. I am in my 70s and have bowel cancer. I'm having chemotherapy for a tumour, but I hope I will be away before he gets out. My life over the past yet 20 years has been destroyed. He told how he was threatened with assault in his regular pub in Glasgow after his son was jailed, but he insisted, I am not responsible for my son's actions. Stuart said, while he has not maintained any contact with his ex-son and has no idea what prison he is currently in, he knows he spent time inside with fellow child killer Stephen Leask, 
who I did have a video a couple, a couple of weeks back, who strangled nine-year-old Scott Simpson in Aberdeen July 97, and now dead triple murderer Peter Tobin. He said, he was with those other animals, that's what my son is, an animal. See, imagine a scumbag like that, sitting with Tobin and that other scumbag, Stephen Leask and all that, and you're just thinking like, Jesus, man. What drink they are talking about? Know what I mean? Fucking... Too many scumbags, no one off bullets, as they say. Know what I mean? But... And one of the things I'd like to say, I know, is like, this is a thing about crime, I know. Sometimes you're making... Your fa you make, by your actions, I believe that you make... your family victims, because... I right, they might not be the ones you've hurt, whatever, but you've you've wrecked their lives as well, do you know what I mean? They have to go through that stigma, shame or whatever you've done, so it's like fuck's sake. Do you know what I mean? But um it's just see when it comes to kids, man, it's just everything's just so emotional and just so these kids are innocent, do you know what I mean? They've not had a life yet. It's done to adults. To protect and nurture children, no fucking hurt them, you know what I mean? Um, and while I understand why people would maybe target the family member of a, a beast like him, I really don't think if the guy's done everything he can to help put him away, change his name, distance his cell, then I think the guy should be left alone, to be honest with you. Do you know what I mean? Fuck sick. Guy's life's been wrecked as well. Imagine getting told that. But this is about the wee boy, you know what I mean? It's, that comes first. Um, I think I read that they'd made a memorial garden for him, which was quite nice, or a, a remembrance garden or something, so that's that's quite nice, you know what I mean? But it's just a, just a pure tragedy, man, what happened to that wee guy. Sick, you know what I mean? And hopefully that scumbag never gets out. So if any could uh, sign that petition, man, I would be, would be really thankful. Um, so I'm going to leave it there and I hope you all have a good night. Take care and I'll see you next time I'm on.